Hi all, welcome to week 10. Uh, what we're doing this week is essentially extending some of our examination of um, the contemporary, contemporary ideas about education, particularly those that might offer us uh, different sort of avenues into thinking about higher education uh, and education more formally. We're also continuing with our uh, inquiry into non-Western um, perspectives on uh, these issues with the graphic novel Persepolis that you're reading for this week. Just a couple of quick things. Uh, Genre-wise, this is a memoir, um, and it's also what we call a buildings roman or a coming-of-age story. And what this means is, is the protagonist or the main character, in this case Marjan Satrapi, um, begins at a young age and over the course of the novel essentially comes of age uh, and into adulthood. And as the story progresses, her sense of maturity, her voice progresses as well. Examples of this that you may have read in the past are things like The Catcher in the Rye or even um, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Maybe you've read that before. One of the other sort of aspects of this is that the, uh, the protagonist begins in a place of the home or sort of part of family, part of society, later then moves or is pushed away from the home, uh, and then at the end kind of reemerges with society or reattaches to the home in some way. So the extent to which Persepolis is technically a Bildungsroman may be up for debate, but I think it's useful uh, and helpful to just kind of think about it in those terms. Also, graphic novel. So what we have here is a genre that is in many ways, and rather obviously, indebted to, say, comics or the comic book tradition, but is also quite intentionally a kind of um, a stretch or step away from it. And in that regard, it's important to recognize uh, that the author is important here, so that authors of comic strips are often sort of subsumed beneath the storylines or the kind of crash bam boom um, of the comic strip stories. But here, Satrapi is a novelist, right? She is an author uh, of her own right, and, and one that, that identity is essential to um, the story itself. Also, we're dealing with a novel, right, a graphic novel, not a short, small serial publication. And even in terms of audience, um, comic book audiences, or at least in terms of their origin in the 50s, were, uh, tended to be targeted towards a juvenile audience. But this is a sort of much more wide-reaching uh, stretch, and that in part is, has to do with thematically some of the issues and the questions that are being addressed here, which are much more complicated, much more sophisticated, uh, and for lack of a better term, highbrow. Structurally, there are a couple of things I want to point out, if even just to give you a kind of uh, set of vocabulary for how we talk about graphic novels. One is the use of frames, right, the actual rectangular or square uh, borders where the text and the images are used together uh, on the page. And you'll have a, a series of frames on a page, five, six, or sometimes maybe just one. So the, the, the decisions that Satrapi makes about what parts of the story are contained within those particular structures is important. And also, how they're juxtaposed next to each other, uh, which ones are in sequence, how you might read them alongside one that came before or one that comes after, or one even on the facing page. Also, the use of black and white might seem rather obvious, and of course it is, but it's useful um, and certainly offers potential for thinking about how she uses that two-tone color um, palette to create certain messages or to convey uh, certain ideas. And then lastly, the use of text, right? So we have, of course, the visual and the textual, but within the textual, we have two different sort of components. We have the captions at the top or the bottom of the individual frames, which connect to the what we call the narrating eye or the uh, adult voice of Satrapi. And then we have the thought bubbles, which are the sort of child Satrapi, or as she grows, the teenage Satrapi, um, who I often refer to as just Marjan, or uh, the narrated I. So those two textual parts, uh, or the two different eyes, are often simultaneously in a frame, and at times at tension with one another. Thematically, uh, this text one of the, some of the things I want you to focus on are identity and formation of identity, and then also, not surprisingly, given that we're teaching it in this, well, I'm teaching it in this class, is education. Uh, and you'll notice those two themes are picked up in the discussion board. So the last thing I wanted to do um, is actually just offer you a very, very brief analysis of this first page that you've got here. And what you'll notice is that the first 
line, the first sentence, as it were, uh, in the caption on the first frame is, this is me. And what's really important to think about with that is it's a kind of claim very early on that this text, this book, is me. It is her. So the connection between the book, the story, um, and identity is immediately foregrounded. Also, the way that that's communicated visually is worth paying attention to. So that this this ten year old Marjan is set off in a frame of her own, next to a frame with three girls uh, or four girls from her class. She could have easily put all five of those girls in one long rectangular frame at the top of the page, but instead she chooses to do it this way. Also, in terms of how the girls look. Um, and we also can consider the, the title of this chapter, The Veil. So that there's a, a sense of a loss of individuality, right? All of the girls are wearing the veil, but yet they're maintaining it, right? You can tell um, different facial expressions, uh, different sort of hairstyles or, or, or hair types, um, different things like that. So that each of these girls in, in some ways is uh, unique, but they are also kind of uh, collectively dealing with this um, attempt to make them look the same. The frames beneath that um, juxtapose two kinds of revolts or revolutions, right? The uh, revolution actually happening in 1979 and then also the kind of revolt uh, that these young girls have when being forced to wear the veil. And of course the last panel below offers a little bit of a sense of humor, which is part of Satrapi's style, as I'm sure you'll notice. Um, and the way that the child self uh, becomes a sense essential uh, at this point. This is the starting point for us in thinking through this, this child's perspective and this child's voice. Um, and then also the way that these children are really responding to, absorbing, reacting to the horrors uh, and violence that are around them. So I think with that, I will leave you to go to the discussion boards. Whenever possible, please do try to cite specific moments, examples, frames, panels, uh, what have you. And use some of the language that I've offered you um, so that you can actually be really specific. And I think it'll help you to consider how some of these formal elements actually affect the, uh, the content of the story and some of the ideas that she's trying to get across. And with that, I will leave you to the boards.